Hey, welcome everyone. Eddie Harold here, creator of the Flexibility for Athletes program, and I want to give you a breath and movement program for runners. All the movements I teach revolve around breath. It's a breath-based process which strengthens the respiratory muscles and increases digestive fire. The stronger gastric fire we have down in the belly without wearing out the parts of the body that get torn up from a lot of extra miles, the better off we're going to be in the long haul 5, 10, 15 years from now. Number two, the yoga movements that I teach are kind of dual in focus in what we're trying to do. Number one, we're trying to repair, restore, rebalance the areas of the muscles that are under duress, stress, and have become activated for an extended period of time from yesterday's run. We want to repair these muscle fibers immediately. Number two, we want to enhance the mind's ability to access these muscles at a deeper and deeper layer each time we go out. And each time we go out, we want to be able to penetrate another layer of the armoring and burying the mind around the skeletal muscles rather than trying to focus on the muscles that we see in the mirror that are moving and running. Number three, a big thing I do with running for myself, I love running, I've done it my whole life. I've been through the 10Ks, the triathlons, I've done my share of marathons, I've been around three hours every time I ran, but I was doing traditional old training, the interval training that was brought here by the Russians in the early 60s. It, it was uh, shameful in how the breathing was done, there was no respect for the body, and it was always more, more, more. And I was taking somebody else's routine and trying to uh, take their work and trying to make it work for me. So I was successful to some degree, but there was still a lot more there that I was totally ignorant and unaware of. And one thing that's really helping me with running is NASA oil. And NASA oil drops are great. You can get these in any organic or health food store. I start the day and end the day with NASA oil in my nostrils, lubricating my nostrils so that the air that comes through my nostrils up into my sinuses is warm and humid and creates a response in my body that burns away excess mucus and, and excess bile that hasn't been incorporated. And I also put the NASA oil drops in my ears twice a day. And the NASA oil drops in my ears really calm down the monkey mind, the windy mind that's blowing all over the place when I have trouble focusing on my desired goal. When I sh slip into sabotage mode or dreaming into what might happen or what what, what happened 10 years ago that has no relevance on today. So this NASA oil is a great way to remove imbalances that are taking place in the brain so you can focus more on your desired goal in the reality of the present moment. So I recommend going down to the store, getting some NASA oil for the nostrils so you receive the maximum benefit of the oxygen so that you burn fat instead of sugar. And number two, to get into the ears so that you balance the brain so that you're really comfortable in your thinking process, moving inward into the stillness that running, running creates, rather than running in the sense outwards, running away from our lives. In this program today, there's going to be a lot of information. The yoga movements that we're going to do are going to, again, look at the same process of enhancing and repairing. We'll be doing forward and backward movements, we'll be doing lateral movements, and we'll be doing spinal rotations. And all of this is going to be breath-based. It's all going to revolve around nasal breathing with an ocean-sounding breath. Now, this is an hour-long program. You can take pieces of this and work on this on your own, or you can take the whole program uh, and one big chunk and try to add it into your routine one day at a time or as much as you choose to. We're going to begin with a breathing routine that I'd like you to do the next time you run. We're going to start to familiarize yourself with the breathing in a seated position or in a chair or you can do it standing, whatever feels more comfortable for you. When you're working with me in regard to the breathing, a lot of times you'll see me working with the number six. And on this graph here, the top number, six, 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 six. The first six is mentally counting to six in your mind's eye. The second six is holding the breath in. The third six is your expiration, your exhale, and the fourth six will be holding the breath out. Now when you're holding in and holding out, I invite you to gently squeeze your obliques and draw your rectus abdominal muscles back up on your internal organs, and you're going to create more heat in the energy centers of your body, and that heat is going to make you sweat, and you're going to break a nice sweat 
running really, really slow rather than going out hard, wearing out the moving parts, which takes days to repair. The core of the body where we're going to create the heat repairs very quickly because the internal organs have so much more blood supply, so much more oxygen and nutrient supply than we have in the ankles, the knees, the hips, the elbows, etc. Okay? The second sequence will be inhale six, hold in six, exhale six, hold out six, and then you're going to run hard for six breaths, breathing through your nose with an ocean sound in your throat. I want you to run hard, but breathe as slowly as you can for those six strides. Try to get as much distance as you can while breathing as slow as possible. In other words, creating the heat through the breathing, creating the discomfort through the breathing rather than mindlessly running further with mouth breathing. The third sequence will be inhale six, hold in for 12, exhale for six, hold out for one, or maybe a little longer than one. Squeeze the belly and then run hard for 12. So the last round we ran hard for six, this one we're going to run hard for 12. Okay? And again, breathing as slowly as possible. And then the last round will be inhale six, hold in for 18, exhale for 12, hold out for one plus, at least one, maybe a little bit longer, and then take it out for 18, breathing as slowly as you can. Do each of these for five minutes. Four times five is 20 minutes. Take the last 20 minutes of your run and run at your desired pace, breathing through your nostrils. If you have to exhale through your mouth, that's fine, but no mouth inhales. I want you to begin to make your body work harder without wearing out the moving parts. And over a period of time, the whole workout will, will totally be enveloped by nasal inhale and nasal exhale. But if this is new to you and you're not used to this type of working out, you're not going to be able to run as fast as you're normally used to with the mouth breathing because the mouth breath is very cooling. So the cooling of the mouth breath, you have to work the belly so much harder to create so much more energy. In other words, you have to burn so much more fuel to get the desired mental workout or whatever workout you're trying to do that day. And then you also have to work the moving parts of your body so much harder. So you're going to create so much more inflammation, so much more wear and tear, and then you're going to expose yourself to a lot more repetitive motion injury. So working out like this, you're going to create a lot more heat. You're not going to go as fast in the beginning, but over a period of time, your respiratory muscles are going to thicken. The, there'll be less pressure on your cardiovascular system, and when those two systems begin to work better, your neuromuscular skeletal system will move faster without you consciously telling it to go faster. So it's an amazing thing. We're, after this seated warm-up, we're then going to go into some yoga movements, some breath-based yoga movements with a meditative mind. And these are just a series of movements that I think you're really going to like. Everybody's going to be able to do them. There's not a lot of I'm not really big on putting your foot behind your head or any of these super advanced yoga postures. I'm into creating structures of safety to enhance the joy I have to run. Then after the yoga warm-ups, we're going to come back and I'm going to coach you through this se sequence. And then the next day, take this sequence out. You might want to write it down on your hand or write it on a piece of paper or have it in your mind's eye. But you'll notice everything works around six and it's 6, 6, 12, 18, 6, 6, 6, 12, 6, 6, 1 plus, 1 plus, and then 6, 12, 18. This is just one workout. There's thousands of different ways to do this because we always want to shock the respiratory system, take pressure off the cardiovascular system, and the counting really focuses the mind. So I think you're really going to like running in the zone all the time. So let's begin. We'll start with the centering. Sit in a chair, sit in a cushion, and we're going to begin this pranayam. We're going to start with inhaling for six, hold for six, exhale for six, hold out for six. Now, if you want to keep your hands down at the side, that's fine. I'm going to lead it by taking my arms up overhead, interlacing my fingers during the holding in period. Okay, so here we go. Sit up tall. Stabilize yourself. If you're standing, lift up on your arches, lift up on your knees, tuck your tailbone slightly, engage your abdominal muscles, and your shoulder blades are rolled back and down. Crown is steady. So here we go. Take your arms out to the side and begin to mentally count. Two, three, four, five, six. Hold the breath in for six 
and squeeze your belly. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale, ocean sound. Two, three, four, five, six. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five, six. Hold in, squeeze the belly. Two, three, four, five, six. Exhale. Three, four, five, six. Hold the breath out. Last round. Inhale. Squeeze. Hold in. Let your mind dive down into the belly. Long spine. Exhale. Hold out for six. Resting breath. Nice job. Do you feel the amount of heat you're able to bring up? Notice how you opened your armpits, your shoulders, your chest. It's really important to be able to get breath up into the top sleeve of the lungs, but you also want to breathe diaphragmatically. You want to get the breath down into the lower lobes of the lungs and into the belly. Just create support down in the low back. Next round. It's inhale six, hold six, exhale six, hold out six, and run hard for six. So we're going to bypass that one. You're simply going to breathe as slowly as you can and run for six. Run hard for six. The next round, let's try this together. Inhale six, hold 12, exhale six, hold out plus one. So a little more than one, and then you'll be running hard for 12. So let's practice this. Slowly begin to inhale out. Hold the breath in, count. Squeeze your belly. Exhale slowly. Ocean sound in your throat. You've got to take this breath control seriously. Now just hold out for a moment. Then nasal inhale and you'd run hard for 12. Run at the pace the breath is suggesting. You're going to be able to run faster than you think. Let's go through another round. Inhale for six. Hold in for 12. Long spine, squeeze the belly. Exhale for six. Hold out for one. Squeeze your belly. And then inhale, run hard for 12. And you repeat that until you reach five minutes on your clock. Next round, we're going to inhale six, hold 18. We're going to exhale for 12, and we're going to hold out for one, and then you'll be taken off hard for 18. So these numbers remain the same all the way through. The holding in number and the running hard number in this particular drill. Okay? So it's 6, 18, 12, 1, 18. Here we go. Inhale for six. Count in your mind. The left side of your brain loves to count. Give it something to do rather than tell you you're doing something wrong. Hold for 18. Just get familiar with it. Squeeze your belly. Let the air out through the nostrils. Ten, eleven, twelve. Hold the breath out. And then visualize running from the inside out, lifting up on your arches, shoulder blades back and down, 18 slow motion breaths. See how much distance you can get. Next round, inhale six. Hold for 18, draw up on the buttock and belly. Exhaling slowly. Ten, eleven, twelve. Holding out for a moment. And then inhale slowly, ocean sound, take off for eighteen. And you would do this till you got to five minutes. And then take the last twenty minutes of the run and run at your desired pace.
All right, so let's go do some yoga. We'll come back to this after we warm up. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna lead the first round with a set of blocks. So if you need the blocks, great. If you don't need the blocks, obviously it's cool. Sweep your arms overhead. Exhale your arms out to the side. And step your right foot back and bend your left knee. Press out through the right heel. Draw up on the right arch. Let the left arm drape up against the left leg and take some deep breaths. So what does it feel like in the left thigh? What does it feel like in the right thigh? So the right thigh would be at the end of the stride. The left thigh would be at the beginning of the stride. Draw up on both arches. Ocean sound. Make mental notes. And then straighten the left leg slightly. Step the right foot up to join the left. Left foot kicks back. You have the right knee tracking out between the great toe and the first toe. If I look back at the left heel, it's off the left buttock. I press out through the left heel. I press the right heel down. I draw both arches up towards my knees. And I notice my left leg now in my mind's eye is at the end of the stride pushing forward from the ball of the foot and the toe pads. And my front right leg is preparing to stride forward. So in your mind's eye, it's all the same thing. And this yoga simply creates more awareness around the muscles you're using. Okay. Straighten the right leg slightly and step the left foot up to join the right. Take your arms out to the side. Take a deep breath in. Come up and hold the breath in. Squeeze your belly. And then exhale your arms out to the side. We're going to take our hands behind ourselves and pull the hands back and fold down. If you have tight elbows or shoulders or you're closed off around the chest area, you want to use a yoga tie. If you can clasp your hands freely back behind you, it's great. If you can do this, that's okay for now, but try to get your palms together so when you pull these back, you're going to be able to get open up in the chest. Again, we want to set the energy in the lower lobes of the lungs. We want to relax first, and then when the breath hits the top sleeve of the lungs, we get that dynamic, sympathetic, high-edge adrenal charge that's based in these nerve endings in the upper sleeve of the lungs. It's going to be so much more dynamic. You always set the container of energy in a relaxed mode in the body, in the mind, and then you move into whatever energy, energy you have in the present moment skillfully, never overheating the body. So I'm going to lead the first round with a tie. I like to take my hands out wide. Just like I'm running, I'm going to lift up on my arches, lift my ankles, I pull my hands back, I can get in a, I'm getting a great chest opener, the back of my legs, great hamstring release, I'm slowly coming down with my knees bent, I'm getting an abdominal massage. I can tuck my chin if I want, or I can keep the muscles in the back of the neck engaged. I lift up on my arches and just scan the back of your legs, starting with the top of the buttock, and then the bottom of the buttock. And as you feel the bottom of the buttock, you'll feel the hamstring spindles tie in on your sits bones, the bones you feel when you sit on a chair at home. And that's where the release is going to begin, at the base of the buttock and the top of the hamstring. And then I'm just gradually feeling a softening taking place down the hamstring until finally it begins to work into the belly of the hamstring, the center point of the hamstring coils at the midpoint of the back of the femur. The femur is the long shaft that's above the knee and below the buttock. And I just soften into that relaxation. This is also a great low back release. Seven to ten breaths. Now to come up, pull the hands back. Tuck the tailbone. Lift up on your arches. Close your eyes when you come up. Drop your tie off to the side if you have one and just be still for a moment and notice the mind's completely blank. Put your intention in that blank mind on what you want to achieve today in your running program. I love the run, you love the run, it's the greatest. But we gotta bring the mind on board. Let's take a look at that routine again. Let's sweep up overhead. 
Palms come together, and we hold the breath in, and we squeeze the buttock and belly. Open each rib and get space between each rib when you need breath. Arms come out to a T position. Soften your knees so you protect your low back. That way you don't get a low back injury. When you bend your knees, you're totally in the hamstrings, the thighs, the buttock. Come on down. If you have blocks, great. If you don't need blocks, either way, kick the right foot back. Bring the left knee forward. Let the left arm drape up against the left leg. If you don't have the blocks, it's going to look something just like this, or it could look like this. Deepen your breath. Press out through the right heel, ocean sound. Press down into the left heel. Now draw up on both your arches and feel your skeletal muscles, and these are a big part of running. I want you to run with your skeletal muscles and your arches lifted, which engage the muscles of the feet, which creates core support in the old reptilian brain, the old cortex, ancient information. We're all runners back in those days. Good. So you'll notice the right leg is at the end of the stride, the left leg is coming into the front of the stride. Now what would happen if I lift my left buttock up slightly and then reset my back heel? Do you feel that entrance into the left rotator and the right quadricep? Nice job. So let's come back up. Straighten the front leg and step the right foot forward and then step the left foot back. Coming into a long lunge. Check your alignment. Get yourself safe. Left leg off the buttock, right knee tracking out. The left leg's finishing the stride, the right leg is moving into the next stride. And try to sense that. Press down into both your heels equally and lift up and draw up on both arches. Feel how the muscles in the pelvis engage there and you'll have so much more lower body strength and awareness. You'll very rarely be out of balance. And just notice what's there. And then straighten the right leg and pull the left foot up to join the right. Take your arms up overhead, palms come together. Exhale your arms out to the side, interlace your fingers, pull back and dive down. Ocean sound. Reach way out. Anchor the heels, lift on the arches and reach out from your navel. Concentrate. Bring your mind's eye into where the body's warm and let the breath cool it. That's it. Jaw is soft. How could this posture help you run? You answer it yourself. You're very smart. Okay, figure out in your own way how this posture is going to help you run faster. Feel the balance on your feet. Feel the support of your thighs, your hips, your buttock, your low back. Feel the stretch in the chest, the shoulders, strengthening of the back. Steady the mind. And slowly begin to pull the hands back. Lift up on the arches, tuck the tailbone, and begin to come up. As you come up, sweep your arms overhead, inhale, and hold the breath in. Squeeze your belly. Feel that heat. When you need breath, exhale, reach your hands to the right slowly and press the left rib cage up towards the sky. Pull the right arm and open the left rib cage, the left hip. Good. A little further, pull the right arm and slowly come up. Take your hands out to a T position. Soften your knees and dive down. Right hand's going to come across to the outside of the left ankle. Roll the left hip towards the right knee and then twist. Open your body to the left. Draw your ankles closer together, knees are bent. Put the weight in the right leg and then reach the left arm, left shoulder towards the ceiling. Great twist. Slowly come down. Let your hands frame your feet. You already have the left hip open. Now step the right foot back. Left knee comes forward. Press out through the heels, draw up on the arches, and bring the right knee down to the ground. 
Release the top of the right foot down. Walk your hands back and begin to straighten the left leg. Take the toes up towards the sky. Get yourself set where you're balanced and then move the foot side to side. And feel the different hamstring spindles. There's four muscles in the back of the hamstring, three primary ones, and just go side to side. Keep drawing the toes up towards your nose and balance on the back of the heel. And what I want to do here, obviously I want to stretch the hamstring, increase the energy moving through the buttock, the awareness. But I want your mind's eye to see more of the hamstring spindles. More than just the primary tendons, the pri not tendons, the primary muscles you're using. I want the mind's eye to see all the little muscles fibers, all the different little supporting grids. And then what's happening underneath the kneecap? What's happening in the heel? in the buttock to the tendons that are there where muscles are being attached to bone. So the next time the foot comes out, just walk your hands forward and just come down and notice you're going to feel a different part of the back of the left leg and left buttock and hip. Soften and slowly come up. Good. Turn the foot down and come out now. Reach out and come down. Turn the toes down and breathe. Let the left arm drape up against the outside of the left leg and you'll support the knee and fold down. And take yourself back. Now, draw the toes up towards your face and now come out. And this is the primary muscle you're using when you run in the back of the leg. Toes are pointed just like you're running. You're just getting ready to place the foot down, heel to arch to ball to toe pads. And just go back and forth. And notice the, the play of energy, the push and pull along the top and back of your thigh, the hamstring and quadriceps in direct relation to the movement of the ankle and the bones of the foot, the muscles of the foot. This is really important to show your mind this little technique. Because in your mind's eye, you could be running right now. So just getting that stretch and noticing the push and pull in the front and back of your leg. If you draw your toes up and stretch down like this, what does that feel like? Breathe, ocean sound, relax coming up. Now turning your toes down and coming out, what does that feel like? Really getting open in the top of the ankle, the top of the thigh, it feels totally different, doesn't it? So all of these little changes in what we're doing show the mind a completely different area of the body. Good. And let's come back now. Slide the foot back. Good. Downward facing dog posture. Fingertips fanned wide. Curl your toes under, press into your hands, lift up on your palms and take your, le your knees off the ground. And just bicycle your feet and release your calves. Lots of ocean sounds. Breath control, ocean sound is so important to the athlete, the cardiovascular athlete. The person that takes the most breaths in a race is probably coming last. The person that takes the least amount of breaths probably comes in first. So let's come up to the front of the mat. You can walk up or jump up. Whatever's right for you, sweeping up. Holding the breath in, squeezing the belly. When your body calls for breath, slowly reach out to the left. Pull on the left arm and get this right rib cage open to where the ceiling and the wall meet or where the clouds reach the sky. Feel your connection to nature if you're outside and just pull yourself in. Draw up on your arches. Now you got the left hip open, you come up. Arms come out to a T position, soften your knees, swan dive down. Take your left hand over, 
And just rotate that right hip open. Good. Mm. So if you pull on the fingertips on the right ankle and you pull this left shoulder away, the right hip opens, the right shoulder opens. Just twisting, left shoulder forward, right shoulder back. Try not to press down into the outside of your feet. Try to use the center line of your feet. Arches are lifted. So now we're in the right hip. Let's come down. Hands release, left foot kicks back. Right knee bends. Coming into your lunge. Again, to your mind's eye, below the navel, it seems like you're running. You're finishing the stride with the left leg and you're moving into the next stride in the right leg. Doesn't matter whether you're a marathon runner or you're a sprinter. Running is running to the mind's eye. And just gently drop the back knee down to the ground. Release the top of the left foot. The first thing you'll feel is the left quadricep muscles taking on the weight of the upper body. You'll begin to walk the hands back and lift the right foot up towards the ceiling. Get yourself safe. If you need your blocks, grab your blocks. This will give you a little more space to stay cool, be easier to breathe. If you don't need the blocks, great. Pressing down into the top of the right foot, drawing up on the right arch. Just letting the foot go side to side. So this lateral movement is so important to enhance the mind's eye's ability to see all the supporting grids of muscles that are supporting the primary muscles that are moving you forward or moving you in reverse. And these kind of stage crew muscles really need to be in the mind's repertoire. It needs to use these muscles to cool down the primary muscles when they become overheated. It's like having more tools in your toolbox than your competitor. So we're just warming up the back of the leg. We're warming up the mind to pay attention to the details of the body. Mm. Okay, let's play with this now. And we'll start by taking the foot out to the side. Be careful with your knee and just fold down. Notice what's coming up for the mind's eye in the body. It's probably a spot of the body you very rarely bring your mind's eye to. Let the right arm drape up against the leg so you have support for the knee and just fold down. Good. Just awakening that is so important. Then turn the foot up and tuck it down. Bring yourself out across the leg. Let the right arm drape on the leg to support the knee. Top of the left foot's pressing down. Just fold down. If you want to grab the foot, grab the foot. Just come down. Mm. If you want more, lift the right sits bone up. That'll get more heat. You feel that? Yeah. Mm. So you can hold here seven to ten breaths or longer if you're doing it as a cool down. And turn the toes back. Now when you fold forward this time, this will be the primary muscles that you're mostly feeling, sensing in your mind moving when you're running. You get a deep release here. And then notice the difference of when the toes come down and when the toes come up. Again, the same sequences in the mind's eye of running are taking place. The foot comes down, foot lifts up. Feel the push and pull on the shin and the calf. Top of the thigh, back of the thigh. Totally different. And really getting open the top of the ankle, so important. Especially you, you folks out there that swim. You don't want to get a lot of drag in the foot. And opening the front of the ankle is the only way I know to do that. Mm. Drawing up, folding down. And bringing that leg back. 
and we'll come back into a table position. Downward facing dog posture, take yourself up. Bicycle your heels. Keep releasing. Using your breath and your mind's eye, constantly explore energy patterns. Repair, restore, enhance. Find high self-esteem. And walk or jump your feet forward. <clears throat> Take yourself up. Sweep up. Hold the breath in. Take your feet out a little wider. And drop back into an imaginary chair. Soften your knees. As, anytime you soften your knees, lift up on your arches. So anytime these bend, lift these up. And let the tailbone move back. So anytime you bend your knees, let's create support above and below the knee. So how do we do that? We lift up on the arches and the ankles. We let the ball and heel and the toe pads create the support as they protrude down into the landing spots on the earth. The tailbone moves back slightly so we get the hamstrings. And now we don't put a lot of duress on the knee ligaments. We just come into just a nice squat. And these are the primary muscles you're going to be using for running. Now if your feet are directly underneath you, these are the exact same muscles you're using for running. If your feet come out a little wider, you'll notice you're moving further out into your hips and less into your thighs. And then finally, if you took your feet outside your buttock, you would not feel the primary muscles of running. You would feel the secondary muscles. You'd feel your inner thighs and your rotators, your buttock and trunk. So foot placement is really important, being skillful in what parts of the body you want to cleanse, purify, and enhance. <sighs> Lift up on your arches. Drop a little deeper if you want. <sighs> Good job, everyone. Slowly come up. Feet come together, arms come out. Micro bend the knees, swan dive forward. Right foot kicks back. Left foot kicks back to join the right. Come down onto your knees. Walk your hands back underneath. Here's a great hip opener. Moving the hips in a circular spiral fashion is unlike running forward, moving forward and back. And creating this circular movement is a great way to circulate energy and raise mental awareness about what's going on in the hip girdle when we're running. The further we can get into the hips energetically, into the buttock, the more you're going to be able to access your quadriceps, the more you're going to feel your calves and your ability to lift up on the bottom of the feet, the arches and the ankles. Okay, so fire hydrant, strong left arm, right knee lifts out in the space and just spiral the right knee. You see you have the heel and the knee at 90 degrees, slow motion movement, breathe even slower. Try to work with gravity, pressing into the left foot, strong left arm, right arms just for balance and open. Extend the leg out to the side. Bring it down so the right arch is in line with the left knee. Left hand underneath the face. Nice easy twist. Now open the chest and swim. Open the chest. Reshape your chest cavity. Backstroke. We want to reshape the chest cavity from the inside out so the lungs and heart have more room to expand so there's more love, more oxygen, more loving kindness in the running routine.
and sweep the hand down and draw the right knee back. Shake out the left hand, move energy through the hand if there's any compression on the wrist. Fingertips fanned wide, strong right arm, rotate the elbow externally, locking the elbow and taking the left knee out in the space. Gentle little spirals. Top of the right foot's pressing down. Your hips are like a rudder. Do you need to slide forward or back? But you want to be able to balance the energy 50-50 in the upper and lower body. Eyes are closed, ocean sound. Strong right arm, strong right leg, right foot. Left arms for balance. Left hip is singing its song. Just begin to activate energies here that you normally aren't aware of, and you'll be more skillful in the heat of battle or in your fitness run. Breathe slower, slow the movement, force your mind to pay attention to details. Thank you. Extend the leg out to the side, lift it up, and slowly bring it down. Left arch, right knee, straight line. Right arm underneath the face. Balance yourself 50-50, upper and the lower body are completely equal. We're not overworking one joint over another. And then the left arm moves through space. And swim the arm. Imagine moving the arm through water, if that's a safe visualization for you. And try to open the armpits, structures of muscles in the upper back, upper chest. Top of the right foot's pressing down, the sole of the left foot's lifting up. direction now and notice what's different in how your mind is describing the energy that's moving in the body to you. Breathe slower, breath control. Finishing it off, slowly coming down and bringing the knee back. As you do, come down onto your belly and draw your heels into your buttock. We'll move into the bow posture, wrapping up the tops of the feet, quadriceps, low back and upper chest. Tuck your tailbone under and lengthen your knees back to the wall behind you. Begin to lift your toes towards the ceiling. And then lift your chin and just stop for a moment. Get a little better grip. Keep your throat open, close your eyes. You don't have to lift high to get a deep release. Keep tucking the tailbone under, getting space in the low back. And gradually begin to lift the body higher. Breathe and relax into your thighs, your low back and upper chest. Stretch your arms long. Keep smiling, you're doing great. This is intense. Just get the chest open. Get those shoulder blades back and down. Optimal breathing. Slowly come down. Arms stay straight. Close your eyes. Release your feet slowly. Hands come underneath the chest. Lift up into a push-up position. 
and hold. Lift your buttock, down dog. Walk in place, move energy around. Lift up on your arches, press your heels down. Good. And step your right foot forward. Walk yourself around to the left. If you have a block, bring it underneath your face. If not, release the block. Let your feet be wide enough so you can feel your inner thighs. Draw up on your arches. Same principle as running. Left hand underneath the face. Right arm twists up. Nice, easy twist. Right arm comes down onto the right foot. And pull yourself down. Left arm comes over. Now inner thigh, back of the right leg. Now what would happen if you change the position of the right foot? So turn the right foot to the front of your mat and now come down. Feel the difference? Lift up on the right arch. Totally different posture. What would happen if you took your hands behind you, clasped, and came down? Nice deep hamstring stretch. Now bring the knee over the ankle, lift the chest, pull the hands back, take a deep breath. Good, pull that right shoulder back, drop into the right thigh, the inner left thigh. Lift up on your arches. Good. And reach your hands up and dive out. And let the left foot come up to replace the right. Step the right foot back. Walk yourself around. And bring the left hand underneath your face. No, excuse me, bring the right hand underneath your face and then turn left. Set yourself up, draw up on your arches. If you need a block, the block it would look like this. Just a little more breathing room. It's great to use the block in the beginning if you have one. So wherever you do yoga, grab a block at the retail store and breathe. If you don't need the block, great. So feel this is a chest opener. What would happen if I bent my elbow and came up? Feel how it's a lower body opener now, not just a chest opener. So there's lots of different ways to work it. Left hand comes out. And let's take a look at drawing the right hand over. And now folding down and notice what it's like when both feet are parallel. And what would happen if we turn the foot? So the heel and arch are in a straight line, and then we come down. Notice the difference. It's a completely different set of signals and muscles, physiologically and psychologically. The breath remains the same, though. Ocean sound, diaphragmatic breath, breathing from the belly, and then up into the chest last. Exhaling from chest to belly. Slow down, you're fine. And then bringing the back heel off the ground and bringing the knee forward this time. So you can do it two ways with the back foot. You can take the heel off the ground and press into the toes and the ball of the foot, or you can drop 
the heel down. Whatever feels right for you at your knee, what gives you the most mental balance, mental stability. Pull that left shoulder back. Draw up on the pelvic floor. Good. Lift up on your arches. Hands come up. And dive out. And step the back foot up to join the front foot. Come up. Resting breath. Nice job. Mm. So we went through one of hundreds of yoga routines for runners. Obviously you're warmed up right now, you can have a great run. If you're introverted, your prana levels are high, you're less disturbed in your mind. Let's take a look at a 40 minute run. The first 20 minutes, I'm going to ask you to control your breath and watch what happens when you begin breath control. Try to turn off the fearful mind or any strands of fear or doubt. Watch what happens when you release the breath retentions and the pressure that we build through the breath retentions. If you're not exhaling through your mouth, no mouth breathing, as the pressure reestablishes in the body from the breath retentions, you're going to notice two things. Number one, unbelievably, your body will begin to move faster without any conscious control or commands from the brain. Number two, you'll be in a remarkable state in the mind where you can really extract running inward, running into stillness, away from all the confusion and technology and emotions that interplay us every day, whether we're at work or at school or at home or wherever we may be. The exercise routine, the breath-based, the nasal breathing with these breath retentions, drawing up on your abdominal muscles when you're holding in and out, is an amazing way to get in great shape, not just for this year, but to continue to get in great shape well into your 50s, 60s, and 70s. I like to work with six, so five minutes of inhaling for a count of six, holding in for six, squeezing the belly, exhaling for six, and holding out for six. And you'll just repeat that. Now if you don't want to count in your mind, that's fine. Count in your strides. So physically counting the kinesthetic movement of the body. As you're running, remember, lift up on your arches and just count strides instead of counting in your mind. It's an ocean sounding breath and there's a diaphragmatic belly breath taking place before we let the breath up into the chest cage. And that's the foundation of what I teach in 90% of my workouts. The next round is six, 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 six. And then after you hold out for six, you inhale and exhale and slow the breath down for six, but try to run as fast as you can. And then as you come out of that running hard, remember, you're going to have an elevated heart rate. So inhale as slowly as you can. That's what's going to stabilize the brain and not shift you into the high edge sympathetic debilitating part of the autonomic system. We want to stay in the parasympathetic response. We want to tease the sympathetic response during the retentions and the running heart. So your inhale needs to be slow. You hold in for six, squeeze the belly. You control the exhale with skill. Always look to control the throat muscles. Every time you do it, you can do it better. It takes years and years and years to master how we control the breath how the pace of the breath relates to the brain and the body, how the length of the breath relates to the body and the brain. The, it's all very intricate. The next sequence, six, holding in for 12, exhale six, hold out for at least one. There's a lot of you guys and girls out there, ladies, that want to hold out longer, that's fine. Everybody's at a different cardiovascular level, and that's fine with me. If you want to hold out longer than one, that's fine. But try to hold out for at least one, and then feel that rush on the inhale, and take it out 
for 12 slow motion breaths. Do that for five minutes and then six, hold in for 18. Slow motion exhale for 12. Really squeeze out as much carbon waste product as you can. Again, holding out for one, at least one. A lot of folks out there, you'll probably be able to hold out longer, that's fine. And then take it out for 18. 18 breaths. Slow, you can't breathe slow enough. Okay, I want you to breathe slower. And then finish up the rest of your run. Take the second half of your run and run 20 minutes at the pace the breath is suggesting to the mind and the body. I think you'll find yourself in an amazing state of flow and relaxation, not just in the run, but when you get done the run, it'll be an amazing sequence for you. I always invite folks to do alternate nostril breathing pre and post workout. It's a great way to warm up the brain and warm up the breathing and when you already have an elevated heart rate, it's a great way to bring your heart rate back down, breathing through one nostril at a time, which thickens the respiratory muscles, gives a great cleansing to the heart and lungs, and also synchronizes the left and right cortex. And when they synchronize, you drop into a flow state, or a state where you can bend your relationship to distance, how far you've gone, how far you need to go, and time, how far, how long you've been out here, how long you need to go. And these are the two things that really, when I was competing all the time, I was always fighting against. How far I have to go, how far I've gone, and the watch, man-made time. And when we can use the alternate nostril breathing to transcend time and distance, improvement takes place. And the improvement takes place unconsciously, subconsciously. You don't always have to climb up Mount Everest to get faster. It's going to happen in a lot more simplistic way. And running is simple. You've been doing it for thousands of years. It's in your cellular memory of your DNA. Begin to work with these breathing techniques. Your health will improve. You will run faster. I have hundreds of these workouts. So play with this one for now. Practice it the night before. Take it out the next day. Try it out for a week or so and see what happens. As always, it's fantastic to be with everybody out there. Thanks for all your emails and support. I look forward to seeing you again on the channel. Go be great.